Hey guys, how's it going? This is the bold metal nerd coming at you with another video. And in this video, I thought I would just do something a bit different, something I haven't really done before. Uh, and that is I am going to talk about uh, Linux versus Windows or, you know, at least uh, why I don't use Linux as my daily driver. Now, before I get into this... Um, I want to emphasize that this is referring only to the desktop versions of Linux. This has nothing at all to do with Linux on servers, uh, Android, and or any sort of Linux infrastructure. This is simply for desktop computing, client, cl slash client computing, whatever. Um, you know, may Android eventually become a true desktop operating system? Yeah, it might eventually happen, but it still has a hell of a long way to go. Um, so we're only going to be talking about desktop Linux and uh, that variant. So anyway, uh, as you can see right here, we have uh, an Ubuntu desktop inside a virtual machine. I'm using VMware Player uh, for this. Uh, now, um, the reason I chose to show off Ubuntu is it's by far, uh, you know, the most common Linux distro. Uh, and many popular distros are based on uh, Ubuntu. Linux Mint, for example, is just based on Ubuntu. So a lot of the issues you're going to run across in Ubuntu are also going to apply to many other distros. It's probably, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> pardon me, guys. I got a bit of a cough that just is persistent. So if I cough, I apologize. Uh, Linux is definitely the most... Um, I'm sorry, not Linux. Ubuntu is definitely the most widely used uh, distro in Linux, so that's why I'm showing it off. Anyway, um, now I'm going to talk about the upsides of Linux before I talk, talk about any of the downsides. The um, way I see it, biggest upside to Linux, of course, is the fact that it is immune to the innumerable viruses that target Microsoft Windows. Uh, that makes this a hugely beneficial operating system to give to folks that are not technically minded and uh, often infect themselves with viruses, which, let's be honest, is a fairly significant portion of the population. Now, of course, there is one caveat to that, and I'll dive into this a little more. That's assuming their hardware is compatible with Linux. We'll, we'll talk about that more when I get to the negatives. But that is a huge positive. I mean, the no virus thing, that is, that's big. So anyway, um, Another really, uh, what I think is a net positive uh, for Linux is they actually uh, were the first desktop operating system to have like, you know, an equivalent of a software store. Yes, I know this has been done in mobile for a long time now, and now it's in Mac OS and Windows as well, but, you know, they basically have, a, you know, quote, I hate to use the term, but an app store, right? Uh, right out of the box, that's nice. Yeah, they have one in Windows, but you got to sign up your Microsoft account to it, which is a little bit of an irritation. I don't know anything about the Mac desktop operating store. I no idea how that one works, and frankly, since I don't have a Mac, I really don't care. Uh, you know, but Ubuntu did it first, right? Um, also, <clears throat> out of the box, it comes with uh, some other really good software like uh, LibreOffice, which, of course, as you, if you're aware, is 100% Microsoft Office compatible. In fact, as you can see, if you look at my dock down here in Windows, it's what I use. I actually could use Microsoft Office if I wanted to because I got some free licenses for it. But I got so pissed off at Microsoft Office, I just elected to not use it because <laughs> I hate it, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better term. So... Um, those are really, I think, the biggest positives to desktop uh, Linux. Now, I'm going to show off one of, or at least some of, what I consider the major showstoppers uh, in Linux. Now, let's say I'm brand new to Linux, right? Never used it in my life. And I want to do something real simple, right? I want to download Google Chrome. Yes, I know I can install Chromium from the store. So if I type, so let's let's do this as a noob, right? So we're gonna go, we're gonna search Chrome. Oh, it's not found. That's Chromium. It looks like Chrome, but it's not Chrome. I want actual Chrome, right? So, all right, fine. Screw it. We can't we can't get it that way. So, 
you know, of course, new, you know, total computer neophytes aren't going to know the damn web page for Google Chrome, but let's assume this person is at least moderately intelligent about using computers, right? Okay, so, all right, so we're going to download now. Hey, look, it, there's the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, guys. <coughs> the uh, Linux equivalent of an MSI or EXE file, so, okay, great, we're going to hit, we're going to hit install, whatever. Oh, it, we'll, we'll open the file as one is want to do. <laughs> Come on, let's download. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I only got a 20 meg connection. Anyway, there we go. So, we would open it like we open most applications. Oh, look at that. We're going to hit install. Oh, Gee, did it install? I don't know. We will see if this actually installs it or not. Now, what's funny, uh, the reason this is working, guys, is this is actually not a brand new um, virtual machine. I actually had to... Um, I had started recording this video the other day, but I had some problems with my screen capturing software, so I actually got this working before. So this might work out of the box. That's kind of invalidating my point, but whatever, we'll see. <coughs> okay, so... Does it show up? Oh! Uh-oh. I don't see it in the application list. Oh, geez. All right, so let's click uh, the equivalent of the start menu here. Uh, let's hit app. Well, I don't want to search. I just want to list all my applications. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So how do we get just install... Now, see, this isn't necessarily a Linux issue. This is more a UI issue, right? But, as you can see, all it shows is the file. Well, shit, that means it probably didn't install, right? So, let's say I'm an idiot, right? And I don't know how to uh, use an in internet search, right? Then I'm going to be pretty frustrated at this point. But, you know, okay, let's... So, now most people who use Linux, yes, I know what version of Linux I'm running, but if you give somebody a machine and you don't set it up for them, they're not going to fucking know what version of Ubuntu they're running. Come on. You give this to a computer neophyte out of the box without installing everything they want first, they're not going to have a fucking clue what version now if you download it and install it yourself yes you're going to know what version of ubuntu you're running of course if you do the actual work yourself you're going to know 16.04 or, or whatever version you're running you're going to know but if you're a computer idiot give me a break you're not going to know so all right so we're going to click the first result here and look at all this shit a non-technical person is going to look at this and say what the fuck is this all right, and now here's another uh, failure, right? Terminal. To simply install a simple program, it should not require terminal. That's ridiculous. But I do know how to fix this. <coughs> Let's see here. Um, yeah, I, f I figured this out by reading the post G Debbie. But if I was not a uh, if I was not a technically minded person, this would pr pretty much be an impossible task for me. So, we're going to go ahead and hit GDB is installed. Okay, now, let's go to our downloads. Now, we can hit open with GDB. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Come on, all right. So we're going to hit reinstall package.
Yeah, we can watch the terminal action, why don't we? Right. Oh, it's already done. Oh, cool. Alright, so now, let's see here. Hey, look at that. Yay, it's installed. But, I had to jump through a whole bunch of hoops to get that to work. And that's one of the easier ones to get to work, uh, if you're having trouble getting it to work. Another one, another popular application, and this is critical, <coughs> again, if you are supporting your uh, less than genius folks, we're going we're gonna to do this, right? We're going we're gonna to download this. We're going to go ahead and we're going to save this file. Because I, I don't think it's going to work without GDB. Let's see. So, we'll see what we got here. Team Viewer, I remember I have had some real trouble getting this to work. I have managed to get it to work. But I don't know if it's going to be as simple as we're going to just start with the build in software thing. We're going to hit install. Nothing happens, obviously. So, We'll try G Debbie. See what happens. Maybe we'll get lucky. It'll make it real easy. Do 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 do. Install. If this is actually this easy on this machine, I will laugh. Considering it's not even a real computer, but whatever. I know I'm kind of rambling, guys. But <laughs> It's kind of boring just watching screens and not listening to people talk, so I apologize for some of the jibber-jabber here. And it looks like it's installing just fine, which is great. It seems to be going pretty well, actually. Installation finished. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay, so let's see now if we actually have. No? Uh oh. Oh shit. Okay, so. Oh no. It's not there. Yeah. Oh look, it's not there. It's not working. All I'm showing. See, that's it's, there's no consistency because it worked when I did the GW thing. It worked fine for Chrome, obviously, and it looked like it installed all the packages, all the dependencies, everything you need for TeamViewer. Obviously, it did not, since we can't even get it to go. Right? Obviously, no success. Let's type Chrome here. We should. Yep. See. So this is working for searching applications, it's just not not installed. So, back to the internet. Will there be go to a terminal? <laughs> I bet there is. How to install TeamViewer Ubuntu 16.04. Let's see what we got here. Uh, and I think we might actually get slightly different answers on how to do this. <laughs> sometimes you see that, like you, you do a search, and sometimes you find different answers on how to do this. Okay. Whatever. Whatever, shut up. Oh my god. Irritating. That's what I get for not installing an ad blocker on this. Um, okay. Look at this shit, right? <laughs> Whole bunch of terminal stuff. Now, I'm not going to go through all this to see if it works, but I am curious. Actually, those do look like pretty similar uh, instructions there. No, they are a little different. Now you can start. Well, let's see here. Hmm. Yeah, they actually, if you look, it is actually slightly different uh, instructions, slightly different commands. I can't right now. I got this to work on other machines by following these instructions, All right? Uh, but for somebody who's not technically minded, give me a fucking break. This this would not fly for someone who's not really tech minded. So Linux is absolutely wonderful if you set this up for someone. Like everybody who I have 
put onto Ubuntu myself. I have um, basically I've I've done the work for them, you know, uh, because I either do it for family members or I do it for um, you know in my side business. And obviously the side business they pay me money, so obviously I'm going to do the work for them. That's what they're paying for. Um, but to give this to someone and just say here you go and not set everything up for them, it's a fu it, it'd be a fucking nightmare. Basically, they're not going to be able to figure out how to do very much on their own. Uh, it's going to be really difficult. A bit more difficult than Windows because enough is different because you do so much through the terminal in Ubuntu and Linux, and you don't do that in Windows. It's a totally new way. And, and if you're not technically minded, you're probably not going to be able to do it. Let's just be honest here. It's they're going to have a re they're really going to struggle with this. Um, and as for me. It's enough of a pain in the ass that it actually keeps me from running this thing as a daily driver. Another, and another reason I don't use this on even one of my secondary machines, there's a couple of reasons. The main reason I don't run it on my main machine is, of course, application support. Games and other applications, uh, mostly games. I mean, most other applications you can find a Linux equivalent, but a lot of games, there just aren't Linux equivalents. Um, Google Drive, for some insane reason, doesn't have a Linux application. Uh, OneDrive doesn't have a Linux application. Um, and just a number of other packages, there are no Linux, real Linux equivalents for them. Um, so really, to me, that just makes Linux, at least on my main machine, a big fail. And it's kind of a failure on some of my other machines as well, because <coughs> uh, the hardware support, isn't as good as it is in Windows. Uh, for example, on my uh, on one of my laptops, right now I can get the Wi-Fi and everything to work out of the box with Linux on it. But the problem is, it doesn't support the brightness controls uh, that are you know uh, it's a Dell key, it's a Dell laptop. It doesn't su support the function keys and turning up or down the brightness. And obviously, turning down the brightness makes it a lot easier to preserve the battery a lot longer on a laptop. That's a pretty critical function. It just doesn't work uh, under Ubuntu. Uh, also, I have noticed that, you know, a lot of Wi-Fi adapters have extreme problems with Linux. It's just, uh, they just don't go. And of course, to fix them, you have to, quote, do terminal commands naturally. But a lot of times they don't work. Um, I've actually had one adapter that sort of worked at first, and then after I did the terminal commands, it actually disabled it entirely. <laughs> you know, so that that was good shit, right? So that's why I'm really not a huge fan of it on the desktop. Uh, and there's one other major glaring uh, issue that I have with Ubuntu, right? Uh, and I'm going to show you the difference between Windows and Ubuntu on this real quick. And this, of course, is critical for me on machines where I have my... Um, obviously, I'm browsing to a network share in Windows. We're going to map the drive. Boom. And now it'll persistently be there as a drive letter, right? And obviously, I have media on this thing. With the names, movies, and music, I think that gives away what's on this thing. So, right... There you go. Um, and it's nice to be able to get to that stuff. Now, can we do the same thing in Linux? Sure. Come on. Come on. Maybe. There it is. And we're going to go ahead and um, we're just going to I guess we'll mount it. There we go. And let's see. Now, if see, because if I do anonymous, I'm gonna have to click on this every single time. Let's see if. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. It won't let me connect. I'm gonna have to enter a domain. Yeah, see, there's no domain. This is a house, right? So I'm going to hit anonymous because I don't have security turned on on my home network share. 
because it's in, it's an internal network. It's not accessible over the internet. <coughs> I don't care, right? So anyway, so now what we're gonna do is uh, to actually get this to be somewhat permanent in Ubuntu. You hit Add Bookmark. This is actually a new thing. Uh, I haven't been able to get this to work in previous versions of, of Ubuntu, at least when I've tried. So anyway, now if I open this up in Obviously, I can see the shares just fine, and you can get into them if I want to. You know, hooray, right? So now, but here's the thing. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm actually going to reboot the virtual machine so you can see what happens. What the hell? It's time. Oh, okay, it was just... Never mind, guys. Just me randomly ranting at this thing. Okay. Oh, it must not have been in the window. Yeah, my super secure password of password on this thing. <laughs> it's not my uh, it's not my actual system, so again, I don't care. There's no personal data in the uh, virtual machine, so I really don't care. Anyway, so all right, now we're gonna go back to that file explorer here. Oh, look at that. I would have to do that every single time to get into my network share. Pain in the ass. Yeah, I'm sure I could just create users and passwords on it. That might make a little make it a little easier. But there's also a domain that you have to enter for to remember. Let's let's make sure. And that's just a pain in the ass. What if you can't set a domain on your networks? Whatever. Anyway, uh, to me that's a problem. Uh, and Linux just has too many, what I would call, small issues that are difficult to iron out that keep it from being really my daily driver. Is it horrible? Of course not. It's not horrible. It's, it's a very decent operating system in a lot of ways, but it's certainly not my daily driver. Um, that's pretty much it. I'd really be interested to hear your guys' thoughts on this. I know Chris over at Dixieland Farms uses Linux uh, is his daily driver on all of his machines, so I'd really like to hear your feedback. And just anybody who uses Linux, let me know in the comments below what you think of uh, my points, whether you think I was right or wrong, whatever. Anyway, as always, if you did enjoy this, please thumbs up, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Okay, this part of the video take two. Guys, I have some egg on my face. Uh at least a little bit. <laughs> As you can see, one of my main issues with Ubuntu was, you know, the difficulty of getting TeamViewer to work. Uh, the funny part was, uh, when I, all I did, I assure you, I didn't actually try to fix this. All I did was reboot the machine to actually show off something else that was unrelated to TeamViewer uh, working or not working, whatever. So yeah, I just think that's funny that it actually started working on reboot. So you know, when in doubt, reboot. <laughs> yeah. I feel a little silly there. And also, after a reboot, yes, I'm still in the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in the um, network share. Now I think this is a fairly new thing in Ubuntu because I remember in a version of Ubuntu that's not much older than this I really struggled to get this to work I think uh, it was either 14 dot something or 15 dot something is the last time I really tried to get this to work and I spent a good long time on it researching this trying to get it to work and it just I could never get the network share thing to work you know properly without doing it every time I rebooted the fucking machine now it just works uh, basically, the way that works is you add the bookmark, uh, but, what, but for a username, you just put in any old thing. It doesn't matter if it's valid or not. If you have uh, no security on your internal uh, NAS device, it'll still connect to it just fine. So, egg on my face there. So, I got actually egg on my face and two things, but some of my points still stand. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the hardware compatibility and the, what I consider the over-reliance on, on terminal to get simple tasks done. Terminal's fine for a lot of things, but also it's kind of frustrating when you gotta do that just to get 
it to do what I would call quote unquote normal stuff. So anyway, um, that's going to wrap this up. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I got to admit when I'm wrong, guys. So anyway, that's it. See you guys later.